well, hello. We are going to see how to visualize the output of a convolutional layer uh, and the weights of the filters that we apply using TensorFlow. First, all this information is going to be on my GitHub that I will put on the description of the video. So let's get started. First, we define our libraries. The essential one here is mathplotlib to see and visualize the output. We are going to download the dataset of the MNIST and this is going to be uh, or the default or the information that we get from this source but instead of just repeating the process of the normal tutorial of using MNIST we are going to manipulate the images and the levels so we could then extrapolate this process to our own image dataset. So first, uh, with this code, we will load into the MNIST variable our train, test, and depth set. And to see how to call this, we call help. And under the data descriptors, we see that these properties, test train validation. So, afterwards, we call again mnist.train to see what options we got, we got here. And we see over here the images and labels properties. Therefore, we see the shape of this data in order to validate uh, how we are going to manipulate them. Now, we are going to define the layers. Um, obviously, it is a bit required that you have seen uh, or, or try to build uh, these conv convolutional layers before from scratch in order to follow this. But these functions only with copy-paste are enough to repeat the process. Here, the get previous features are going to get us the amount of uh, dimensions that we get from a previous layer. As for example, if we are going to put an input, for example, in a batch of the images of 10 images that are reshaped with these other dimensions with three channels, this function we will return the product of all these dimensions we need this in order to make the translation from a conv convolutional layer to a fully connected layer then the conf layer over here will return us the convolutional layer and according to the parameters we define we will get a normalization output or we're going to get a max pool from this. This is by default normalized. And um, we have a relu activation function by default. The key word here is name scope and name for the convolution. Because with these two names, we will call the operation or for the case of the weights over here we will need the w to call the filters that we're going to train it's also specified here for calling this by restoring a saved model we need to append a double dot and a zero afterwards the fc function will do the same but for a fully connected layer and if we define fcl as our name scope this will be our output layer this because uh, otherwise we will make an activation for this or call a dropout 
So now we define the model and a function to train it. Over here, we define a small model and above we have the way to start it. We have placeholders for X, Y, the, a train bool that will say if it's training or is testing. For testing, we set this uh, placeholder to false. And later on, we use a softmax and the loss. We are not going to calculate the accuracy or other metrics here. These following lines, actually these three, are required in order to make the straining bool placeholder to work for normalization. When when this is set to training true, each layer are going to be normalized by the mean and variance of the batch data that is going through. And it will be stored using the exponential weighted average, moving average. And when we set this uh, is training to false, the mean and variance that were calculated previously are going to be loaded instead of normalizing the, for example, just a single image by its own mean and variance, which won't result in anything because it's only one, uh, one row for this process. Later on, we start the session and we define if we restore and save at the end of the process. We are only running here the learning process and to see the loss, the cross entropy loss. So now we are going to just train a bit for 10 iterations the data. So first we are going to load or mount the images that in another variable and reshape them in order to have uh, a shape of number of samples, uh, width and height, and the number of channels. We just are going to tra or change the name of labels to white train. And this definition by shift and limit, I'm setting this like this because of future uh, batch, batches that we want to train, but only here we are going to use just one batch. So we train it just for 10 iterations. And now if we want to restore the previous model that we saw, it's going is stored already in MNIST in this number, in this name over here. We have to define all this everything and with bar name we are going to call the variable of the name of the operation that we set previously like for example the w under the name scope or the convolutional operation and the result of it is going to be returned so First, we are going to call this operation and define from our training set only one example, one picture, the first one. We're not setting this like only zero, but instead zero to no one, because if we define the first one, we will get uh, a square matrix of only these dimensions. But if we define like this, it will have the shape like uh, the batch shape that we trained and is the shape that our model has. So it's a requirement here. So the bar name uh, we are going to call for the convolutional operation in the first layer we defined and in the second layer. We have only two convolutional layers in our model. So we run 
and we see that we got two dimensions because we set that in our model to have two depth two dimensions for the depth in each case and let's see it over here I, w I have a function to load on or only specify the, the matrix that we get as a result and which of these filters or sorry not filters with which of these layers for the depth we are going to see we have two in this case we are visualizing the second for the first convolutional and second convolutional layers mm. we have pretty different results so now what about after 1000 iterations we repeat this the process but we specify to be to, to show the output of the of the learning process we start with a loss of two and we get until this point very small loss so we repeat the process and compared to the just initialized uh, outputs we got totally different results what about the filters or the training weights we just need to specify here or change the conf name by w which we put for the weights and these are our filters we defined previously this function for the filter where in in difference or in contrast with the previous visualization the weights have a shape of filter size or filter shape filter size input channels output channels so we in this case for the first convolutional layer we got three channels one of the input two output and for the second we got four two input two output what about max pooling for our previous function we are going to modify or just specify the max bool as true only with this everything is the same we will enable the max pooling by a default of 2 for the for the filter for max for the max filter or max pooling so we define another name for our model for max pooling and repeat the process just only 10 iterations visualize the output it's a bit different these are these are the weights and after 1000 iterations and visualize them a bit different isn't it well that's it thank you